our 67th Republic Day. How about that? A round of applause for India Republic Day. How about that? And you know, we are sitting here at the Mackenzie Center, and Mackenzie Center is by Saratoga High School. And uh, you know, Saratoga High School churns out some really successful, happy kids in our community. Happy kids, that is the key, right? You can be successful, but it churns out healthy, happy kids. And one of the hallmarks of a successful community is to have a good educational institute. And Saratoga High School is one of the key traits of Saratoga, responsible for our success. And how many of you are here who are Saratoga High School alumni? I can see one over there. Who else? Come on, let's see a show of hands. I can see you guys. The light is too bright. But yes, I can see one more. You know, Saratoga High School is famous for quite a few things. Great school scores. You know, they are graduates go to MITs of the world, they go to uh, IITs of the world, Illinois Institute of Technology. They go to Georgia Tech, they go to UCLA, they go to Berkeley, they go to phenomenal schools. But I'll tell you one more thing that is not probably very well known. It is our band. It is the band. You know, our middle school band has actually performed at uh, President Obama's inauguration a few years ago. Phenomenal music program. Phenomenal music program. We have also gone out to, to the Rose Parade earlier this year. Santa High School was at the Rose Parade. One of the 20 bands from across the world that were invited at the Rose Parade. And I was delighted to be there representing our city at the Rose Parade. It was a phenomenal day for our community. What else do we have? There are some pride and treasure of Saratoga. A Tony Garden. Who has heard of a Tony? Come on, let's have a big round of applause for a Tony Garden. We also have Montalvo. Anybody who's heard of Montalvo? All right, a few people Montalvo. How about uh, the Quarry Park? Anybody heard of the Quarry Park? Who's been to the Quarry Park? I bet you some folks have not been to the Quarry Park. And the reason is because we just inaugurated it last year. Yes, somebody's been to the Quarry Park. It's the latest park in Saratoga. 12 acres of open space. Splendid opportunity to go out for a hike and enjoy the open space that we provide to our citizens. The Quarry Park. Check it out. And from the Quarry Park, we are building a trail all the way to the Pacific Ocean. We call, them, call it the Trail to the Sea. Our Boy Scouts, our citizens, our Girl Scouts can park at the Quarry Park and they can go for a hike all the way to the Pacific Ocean right from here. And last year was my first year of the council. But a phenomenal accomplishment of last year with the leadership of our Mayor Harvard Miller, he was Mayor last year, he might be here today as well, was the launching, the opening of the Quarry Park. It's a phenomenal offering for our community and I was delighted to be part of that day. So when you look at me, you know, I came to do my grad school in Connecticut, in Connecticut, studying mechanical engineering. And for me to be in office today, I feel it's an amazing opportunity that, that the United States of America provides. For somebody like me who came on a student visa, to be standing here as an elected official, right? How many countries in the world provided an opportunity? You know, we are here celebrating democracies. We are celebrating India, which is the, the largest democracy of the world. And the United States, the oldest, there is a lot of synergy. Because you look at the innovation happening in Silicon Valley, you look at the entrepreneurship spirit of Indian Americans, who have lived back in India, who have put in their energies to make India prosper, who come out here and now are working towards the success of Silicon Valley. How about the entrepreneurship of Indian Americans in Silicon Valley? Let's give a big round of applause for that. So, you know, there is a lot that we try to do in this country, right? We are, some of us are doctors, engineers, high-tech geeks, musicians, you know, you name it, right? We are doing a variety of different tasks. But I've noticed that there is an opportunity for us to make a difference, for us to make a difference. And that's what I've tried to do with my city council role. I call it very simply, providing services that are cheaper, faster, better to our community. Simply stated, and what does that mean? So when I got to the council, you know, I was, I'm a high-tech geek. Don't I look like one? Yes, I do. You know, as a high-tech geek, what I did was I sat down with my city manager and I said, 
Tell me what are the top 10, top 10 things that our citizens are using today? What are the top 10 services that they are using today? And what are the top 10 revenue making services that is bringing money into our city? And I got a list from the city manager. And then I said, how can we make it easier for our citizens to leverage those services? So we did simple things. You know, sometimes it takes simple things to move the ball further. What we did was we automated the booking of meeting rooms and event center for our community. We are running surveys to get feedback from our community. Applying the high-tech algorithm into city government can certainly make it easier, faster, better for our citizens to leverage services. Right? It's all about how we can do service. You know, I'm in office to do service. And that's topmost of my mind. You know, when I get up in the morning, when I get out and go to work. But when I'm done with my work, I'm thinking about how exactly I can work for my community to address their pain points. For example, give you a quick example here. Trees are a, are a treasure for Saratoga. Redwood trees, we have oak trees, they are protected. But dead trees, you know, they need to be cut down because it could be a fire hazard with the drought and everything. What we did was, we made the process a lot easier to cut down dead trees. A permit is required but you don't need, need to pay up front. We have simplified the process. So little things can help alleviate the issues that a community has. My stint in the planning commission provided me that perspective. So when I look at what's going on with the Indian American community, we all have a fabulous time socializing. We have we work pretty really hard. We, we lend our energies to doing what we need to do in our in our in our businesses, in our in our offices. But what about getting involved in the community, right? How can we get involved in the community? Are we really involved in the community? What else can we do? I see it is, there's a little bit of a gap there. There is definitely a little bit of a gap there. And my key takeaway for today is two things. Is two things. You know, what we do, in fact, uh, I was talking to folks outside, we do a great job of showing up to events, taking pictures with politicians, writing checkbooks to politicians. But what we don't do very well is knocking on doors, getting involved in the campaign. If there are issues that are bothering us, let's get involved in the campaign. You know, last year, or a couple years back, we had SCA 5. Has anybody heard of SCA 5? State Constitutional Amendment 5. You know, what it was doing was, it was bringing affirmative action back to California. Do we have affirmative action back in India? We have had it for decades. It's causing a lot of problems. Do we want to have the same problem repeated over here? Not quite. So, it's an opportunity for us to engage and highlight our concerns to elected officials. You know, simple things like that can make a difference. And what happened was, our Asian community participated in that engagement process. They were reaching out to elected officials and telling them that that change, SCA 5 is harmful for the country, for California, and we need to make sure that that change is not implemented. And that's, and that's really what happened. So, when we express our voices, our voices are definitely heard and they will be addressed. That is the key component of learning for me, how I got involved in the city with my planning commission, with getting involved with the traffic and safety commission very early on in Saratoga to, to finish a road paving project outside my home, working with my community to launch a neighborhood safety watch. You know, it is very easy. It's an opportunity for us to get involved. And here is the second opportunity. To vote. Simply stated. To vote. Right? Getting registered to vote. You know, many of us are still on a permanent residency. What does it take for us to become American citizens? Let's think about that. What is preventing us from becoming American citizens? Secondly, taking the opportunity to get registered to vote. Many, many in Fremont have noticed the population of 263,000, we only have about 32,000 Indian American voters in Fremont. You look at Saratoga. Saratoga has an Indian American population of 4,000 and we have only 145 high propensity voters. Is that good? 145 high propensity voters who have voted 3 out of 5 elections out of a population of 3,000. That needs to change. That needs to change and we need to take the first step today. I am highly energized by looking at candidates like we saw Ash Kaura. Ash Kaura is running for assembly. Rokhana is not here, he's running for Congress. 
You know, we have more and more Indian Americans who are running for office, who have a great opportunity to get elected to office. But it can only happen with our support. So two things. Let's get involved in the community. Let's get registered to let's register to vote and let's exercise our vote, exercise our voice. That is the most important thing. Thank you all. I'm delighted to be here. And 